All right, so this video is about debunking charging myths and really getting the facts straight once and for all. Depending on where you read and what you read, you can absolutely find different information about how these guys should be charged, what type of charger to use it for, and when to charge it. So number one, when you purchase this brand new, there is no requirement to fully charge this 100% up. It's just not required. These are lithium ion batteries. They're not the old style nickel cadmium or nickel metal hydride. That makes a big difference. Back in the old days, that was important. And they still use those batteries, so I really shouldn't say back in the old days. But when they used them for phones, that mattered. These guys have lithium ion or lithium ion polymer, not an issue. So when you get these brand new, if you need to use it right away, fine. You're not going to destroy the battery. Now, common myth that I'm sure everyone is familiar with, even those I think that believe it, sometimes um, doubt themselves because it's just so pervasive. There is no memory effect on lithium ion batteries. This means that you can charge or discharge this guy um, at different um, levels. So you don't have to uh, wait till 50% and then you know you keep charging it at 50% and you think, oh my gosh, now it's only going to be half as good. No, 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 no. That's not the way the technology, the electrochemical composition of the lithium ion battery is actually set. It's completely different than the old style. Okay. So you're not going to have a less charge because you're constantly charging it when it's 50% versus when it's 20%. This is lithium ion batteries. One of the huge advantages and why Apple and other mobile manufacturers use this is quite simple. It's because, look how thin that is. And for the thinness of, uh, of the battery and of this phone in general, you can get up to 40% more higher than it compared to nickel cadmium. That is huge. When you talk about capacity, that's a big deal. And because of that, there's no memory effect. Again, how they're made, so you don't have to worry about charging it at different stages. Use it and abuse it the way that you need to and it conforms to your everyday lifestyle. That's really what this video is about. So don't worry about memory effects. Charge it when you need to. Charge it, you know, obviously before a big party or something. So I'm going to give you a link below. Take a look at it. And what you're going to see is a link that goes to Apple that talks about their lithium ion batteries and how the cycle count works, i.e. don't worry about memory effect. All right. Second thing really relating to number two is you know, most will say, well, you know what, if you plug this in overnight or for a week, you're going to come back and this thing's going to be gone. It's going to be dead or it's not going to work or you've lost your iPhone or you've shortened its battery life. It's just a myth. It's just ridiculous to even think about that for a moment. And why? Why is this? Well, because the batteries and the technology, the smart hardware that's in the battery and the software that's, that uh, is in charge of orchestrating how to charge the battery and how to manage it is advanced. It's not a new technology. It's a mature technology. And what this means is, um, in terms of overcharging, it will prevent overcharging. The hardware on the battery and the combination with the software will prevent overcharging. So when it gets to 100% and you plug this in, guess what? It's just not going to charge. Simple as that. The software says, well, I'm Battery's already at 100%, so why would I add more power to it? I'm going to damage it. It's kind of 101 logic at this point. Um, Apple's designed it this way. Many, all mobile manufacturers designed it this way. You can't overcharge these unless, you know, it's not operating incorrectly, but these are designed to prevent overcharging. So if you want to leave it plugged in all day long, 24-7, guess what? Fine. I've done that with many of my phones because I use, don't use some of them all that often. Guess what? It's not an issue. If it's not using the battery, it's using the power, better for it. So don't worry about overcharging it. Um, number four, using phones while charging uh, can damage the battery or the phone. False, false, false. It's just not true. If you want to plug the phone in and you want to use it while you're charging, go for it. Uh, again, the battery monitoring system is going to provide enough power to charge the battery at whatever level it needs to. It's That's what it's designed for. That's what the technology is there to do. So if you want to charge it up and use it, fine. It's not an issue. The only really side effect that you have, and again, it's fairly logical, is, hey, if you have, let's say, uh, I don't know, what is this, a 12-watt 
a 10 watt. If you have like a 10 watt adapter and you're charging your phone, it just means that if you're using it and you're browsing the web and you're checking iTunes and you're listening to music and all this stuff, if you're doing that with a phone, all it means is that you're going to get less power for the battery to charge. So it'll take a little longer. Instead of, let's say, three hours to charge the battery, it may be like three and a half or four hours because you're using it and there's screen uh, screen display uh, using the power and all of this. Basically, you're distributing power, right? Part of it is to use the phone and the other part is to charge the battery. But guess what? You're not damaging the battery. You're not damaging your phone. You're not going to blow it up. It's not going to have a memory effect on you because you're using it. It's just not true. Use it to your heart content, whether it's plugged in or not. Non-starter in terms of um, the truth. Now, I think a really big thing here when we talk about charging is Related a little bit to the memory effect, don't try and use this battery to zero thinking that you're resetting it in terms of charging. We kind of talked about this already, but don't worry about it. Charge it when you need to. Charge it before a big engagement or at nighttime, and that's it. You're set. You're done. No need to worry. And the last thing that I think is very useful um, is can you use your iPhone with an iPad or Mac notebook power adapter? Heck yeah. Heck yeah, you can use iPad adapter to charge this. The, the one that comes with this iPhone is 5 watt. It's junk. Honestly, it's junk. It's crappy. For as much as it, pay for this from a premium standpoint, you should not get a 5 watt adapter. That's just shame on Apple. They know it, but hey, they're going to make more money because you're certainly not going to wait three hours to charge when you can wait an hour and a half. It's ridiculous. They know that. They make more money. You know, business is business, I guess. Um, you're not first in their mind. Shouldn't be a surprise. But in terms of their charger, this is for an iPad. Guess what? You can use this on here. It's not an issue. It's uh, it's 10 watt, so it'll charge. And it'll charge faster. And it'll be noticeably faster. It's not going to damage the battery because you put more wattage into it. I'll just repeat. The software monitoring and management system coupled with the hardware management and software a monitoring system that controls how the battery is charged on a software and hardware level it's all in here so you don't have to worry about the um, having double power it will take care of it for you um, in fact you can also get an adapter that's USB-C right we've seen these guys these are kind of the new ones for the MacBook Pro that converts from USB-C to a lightning for this guy see here you can convert it from here here apple sells the cable for probably 30 or 40 bucks and it'll charge and that's great because it charges your iphone in like 30 minutes if that uh, tops it off 100 percent this is for my macbook and you can bet i use this all the time i use it actually more for my uh, note 8 since it comes natively with USB-C. <coughs> get with it apple but in terms of uh what charger you use yeah you can get the converter and charge your phone with this guy and this is oh, 80 some watt the phone will not use all of it if it doesn't need to. It'll manage it for you. Now, if you want some evidence of this and you don't want to take someone's word uh, from a YouTube video, fair enough. Even if they're educated and, and they help design some of it, fair enough. The best way to, to validate if that's true, if you can use multiple chargers, is look at the link below. Blue. And I will provide a link that is on Apple's website that I quote says using on Apple 18 watt 12 watt or 10 watt power adapter charges some Apple devices and accessories faster than a 5 watt power adapter that's the 5 watt that comes with us I don't have it because I threw it away I mean what the heck I'm not gonna wait forever Apple 29 watt 30 watt 61 watt and 87 watt USB-C adapter and an Apple USB-C to Lightning cable converts it from USB-C to Lightning right here are fast and compatible with the following devices. This is from Apple's own website. If you have an iPhone SX Max, an iPhone SX, an XR, an X, an 8, an 8 Plus, they all are compatible and can use these. Furthermore, if you have an iPad Pro 12.9, third or second generation, um, or a first generation as well as an iPad 11 inch or 10.5 inch they can all use a myriad of these devices you're not gonna damage it 
all you're going to do is get faster charge time. And really that's the benefit, is if you already have an adapter here, why on earth am I going to spend another 40 or 50 bucks to get one of these when I can use what I already have on site? If you have an iPad, why are you going to go get another one of these for this? There's nothing different about it. This works with that perfectly fine. If you're an Android user, you probably already know this. For, for iPhones, Apple's not as forthcoming on how you can kind of combine these adapters because <laughs> they're not going to make money if everyone knows you can use one adapter and switch out a cord or two and you're done. So anyway, feel free to leave your comments below. Let me know your thoughts.